as a teenager, one of those movies that had done that for me was Clueless. And that I'd seen that movie and I thought, I want to talk like this, I want to dress like this, I'm going to California. If Clueless is candy, then Zola is like the cavities. And I said that it was blue velvet meets Bodak yellow. And, um, <laughs> and I rode that wave for a while. And then I was like, I don't want to ever see this again. <laughs> um, and I, saw, I retired it in 2020 until today. Um, <laughs> but yes, I, and, but I, it really felt that actually. I really felt that. And in that, you know, I, I've, I've never met David Lynch, but he's a hero. And um, I think he, to me really speaks in this kind of like nightmare space, which is not, I would not say is my space, but I really enjoy like the tenor of his work. I enjoy the distress of his work. And I felt that Asia's thread had a lot of distress in it. We're literally talking about the potential of being sold into sex slavery, which is a riot, I know. <laughs> but I think that she did this amazing job of recasting the narrative so that it read fun, but if you are reading between the lines, there's a good deal of terror and anxiety. And it's, you know, she's a 19 year old girl who's found herself in a situation that she doesn't mean to be in. And I think a part of how she's writing it is that like, I got this, but I think it's with the distance of having made it. I wanted to have the distance of her having survived or having gotten out of it, but also looking at what it might feel like to actually be there and that actually being there might sometimes just feel a bit uncomfortable, actually, right? Or, or awkward or just not easy. You want to bring on Jeremy O'Hara, who has not written a script before. He's a playwright that we know now. 12 nominations, right, for, for Slave Play? He was in college. He was at Yale. OK, so how do you sell him as your co-writer? So I get the job. <laughs> Amazing, right? I get the job, and then there's a short list of writers that we've come up with and I know one writer isn't available but I'm like this is the only person I want because I know they're not going to be available so like and then everyone falls in <laughs> love with them and they're like amazing this person would be great and then they're like they're not available and I was like damn <laughs> who, we, who we gonna get you're good um, you're good at the game and like, who we gonna get guys we're so desperate I have downloaded all of the vocabulary of this movie into my head, but I need like a person who's like part phone to work on this movie with me. Like <laughs> someone who just is like inside of Twitter, like every day, you know, just like eating Twitter. But Jeremy gives great meetings. So like Jeremy just came in and was like, you guys, and and he, they, he wins them over and they love him. And the deal for me was that like, even if they say yes, like you can't, you have to finish your homework before we start the, movie and he was like and he had home he had a homework that he had to do over the summer which was to write his like second play and so I was like if you don't finish the movie if you don't finish your homework you can't work on Zola <laughs> and so You're a good we parent. made a yeah. deal yeah. and then he sent me his homework and it was slave play I love this painting so much. I lived in Madrid for a semester. I studied abroad when I was at NYU, and this painting lives at the Prado. And um, I met it in the fall of 2002. I remember walking into this room and being like, are you flirting with me? Um, and I was like, what? I think it's such a great reference of a beginning, middle, and end, right? Like mm. panel one is heaven, panel two is earth, and panel three is hell. And most of the work that I'm interested in making tends to take this kind of like shape. But Zola was the first movie when I went back to it that I was like, oh no, but this is actually Zola. And I think that this also connects to the Wizard of Oz thing that you said before. This Twitter thread had this journey that felt like this where being home being in Detroit being in Detroit which is home in her thread and our version of home that first act is a bit like heaven the music's a bit softer and on the road from home to Florida um, you know the bass literally drops and once the bass drops you find um, you know a con once the, uh, the bass drops and there's a confederate flag on the side of the road and you're like we're not in Kansas anymore, right? We find ourselves on Earth, and Earth, you know, you introduce 
the, the just a multitude of people and new sounds and everything feels busy and but it's also kind of sexy is the thing it is also a little bit alluring and enigmatic and then in the third act black is introduced this sort of deep black and things get pretty absurd and i feel like in zola that happens when coleman is handing taylor a gun or or, or it's when nick is vomiting it's like one of those two moments feels like the beginning of of an end in some ways, and that moment tells you we're really far away from home, right? We're like really far away from the beginning. A part of why I really wanted to make this movie is that I thought, like, what is the movie that Janixa at 17 today would want to see? And, um, and so a part of me was like, I want to imbue this with the thing that you know, sometimes you go to a movie and you walk out of the movie and you're like, so much makes sense to me, or like I have some purpose, or I figured something out, right? And I and I remembered that like as a teenager, one of those movies that had done that for me was Clueless, and that I'd seen that movie and I thought, I wanna talk like this, I wanna dress like this, I'm going to California. Um, I just, all these, fe you know, I just, I felt like a real surge from that film. And um, I don't think that Zola is clueless, I don't mean that. But I think in some ways, like culture, where we are, you know, there's been so much rot from when I watch Clueless to where we are in this moment, there's been a good deal of rot. If Clueless is candy, then Zola is like the cavity. The movie was a story about, uh, it's the first line. Do you want to hear a story about how me and this bitch here fell out? That was the story. That's where it ended. It's not a story about how I got home after. It's not a story about mm -hmm. how she went home and had another child. It's not a story about uh, the guy that goes to jail. And I think that if you know it's a real story or if you like the thing, you'll do some digging when you walk away from it and you'll find, you'll find the, the loop will close, right? Like, I kind of wanted a little bit of that ellipsis. I wanted that feeling of when you fall in love with somebody and they break your heart, it doesn't always have an end. Mm -hmm. It sometimes just has the dot, dot, dot.